Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm back today with a video on a gun that I actually released just uh, a couple of days ago, but I had to take it down because I was not so satisfied with uh, how it turned out to be. Today, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this new bad boy. Um, gun that I just purchased a couple of months ago, maybe. Um, it's this new Swiss Assault Rifle 07. Um, or rather the civilian versions thereof. Um, I'm gonna briefly talk about the history of this gun in the Swiss military um, and then how I set it up and what I plan to do with it as part uh, of my new approach to, um, to the selection of guns that I own. Um, um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, <coughs> if you're watching this video and if you have uh, had a look at other videos that I have on my channel, um, you probably know that I used to own a SIG 553 already, the short barrel version. Um, the SIG 553 is a really awesome gun, okay? Um, in general, I have praised it over and over throughout the years. Uh, I have shot it under various conditions, suppressed, not suppressed, a bit on a distance, 100 or 300 meters, um, at short distances like 20, 10 or 30 meters. Um, my experience so far um, with the 553 platform are great, um, especially compared to the older brother that we have in the Swiss military, the Assault Rifle 90. Um, the Assault Rifle 90, which I have here on my back, um, is, as the name implies, was introduced in the 1990s, although it was actually conceptualized and tested and brought into production already years beforehand. Um, the Assault Rifle 90 per se is a great gun. This one takes it to a new level, the 07. Um, basically, the Assault Rifle 07 shares pretty much, um, like most of the parts, it shares with the Assault Rifle 90. It has the same lower receiver, upper receiver, with the exception of the barrel, and the, the gas action is the same. Uh, bolt and bolt carrier are the same. Um, the, the long barrel segment is pretty much also almost the same as with the Assault Rifle 90. Now I have to look at it. Yeah. Uh, because it's made uh, to carry the um, grenade launcher. So, what does the Assault Rifle 07 bring to the table? Um, you have to look back at Swiss military doctrine to understand why this gun came to be. Um, the idea is in the Swiss military is to have every soldier equipped with. Um, an assault rifle and his basic personal material, uh, what's it called? Personal material includes a assault rifle, a magazine, basic load bearing equipment. Um, it also, you have um, a rucksack, sort of the basic stuff that you will need when you just, um, when you have to go into service, okay? Um, the idea is that under exceptional circumstances, like if there is a mobilization or something like this, you could sort of fight already your way to the ready point with your team or your unit. Um, this is why they issued ammunition back then, which has now been discontinued after someone shot some other person with this kind of ammunition. You're still issued the rifle um, without ammunition this time, uh, since some years already. And what you do is every year, um, while you're serve, while you're actually to reserve. Um, you have to go year on a yearly like shooting. Uh, what's it's like a shooting session, mandatory a shooting session, at 300 meters. Uh, keep your gun zeroed in. Um, so the idea is that whenever you're called to service, you have your basic equipment that works because the gun is zeroed in. So even the most stupid soldier, uh, the most lazy ones, are basically able to project force on an effective basis. Okay, so when you shoot, you know that you're hitting something, which is not as straightforward as some I think. Um, the Astro Rifle 90 is great um, as far as um, reliability goes and accuracy, but with a 21 or 20 inch barrel, uh, even with a folding stock, it's not exactly what you would call handy in sort of modern combat scenarios like in urban environments. Hence, the Swiss military uh, tried to overcome this uh, lack of how do you say, of flexibility in urban scenarios with um, 
what I think is called the Astro Rifle 04. This was the the early version of the Astro Rifle 07. The Astro Rifle 04, I think, is a Sig 552 short barrel that comes in in a nice case full of fancy equipment like laser, ACOG, that kind of stuff. Uh, the Sig the Astro Rifle 04 or Sig 552, I think, is not a is not a gun that you can carry home so it's not personal equipment you just issued uh, the gun or the little the package as it comes with under exceptional circumstances if your service requires it we had a bunch of those uh, during my service at the beginning but just two for the whole platoon so i'm not exactly sure what idea was um, the lieutenant was just using one just for gigs but i was just using my old assault rifle knight with grenade launcher and that was it um, I think the Sword Rifle 04 has since then been discontinued from Swiss Arms uh, and they rolled in the SIG 5.53 which I don't think I need to emphasize changes essentially the, the inner workings um, the spring um, that is attached to the ball carrier is not like an AK um, attached at the back of the receiver it's just like a normal SIG 5.51 or 5.50 is at, is at the front, so the gas piston has the, the spring wrapped to it and the action cycles from forward as a send for backward. Um, it's supposed to bring enhanced reliability. As I said, I, haven't, I have never... I, I've shot a SIG 5.52 but not extensively so I cannot judge on that one. It seems to be... there seems to be consensus that the 5.52 had essentially little flaw uh, with this uh, spring thing and that's why they moved to the 5.53. Nevertheless, the Swiss military f uh, followed um, suit and they stocked um, the new version um, as part of a broader package called Assault Rifle 07, which is this gun pretty much in this configuration. This is issued to as not as personal material, but um, is issued just for service to special units that require uh, usage of it, uh, such as the, the Swiss Grenadiers in Isone, in Ticino, where I come from. Uh, the paratroopers and yeah this is pretty much what um, I seem to understand from pictures and from people that have served with it it comes in a package that has um, that is essentially as I have it here it has the um, the BNT short uh, foregrip it has the BNT flashlight it comes with an T1 endpoint and the magnifier for it. It has a retractable buttstock and it comes with a sling from Kastinger um, that pretty much mimics what you normally carry in the military, which is green sling plus some elastic cord at the front. So this is just a more nicer package for the cheapest links that I we used to do back then, which is just a normal assault rifle knight sling with some rubber at the front whatever rubber you can scavenge to make it a bit elastic so that when you carry it for a longer period of time it doesn't just hurt too much it has a um, quad rail at the front uh, and what I don't have here but what you also see in pictures is a pack 15 uh, that is mounted here at the front for night hopes to make you look more badass um, which for obvious reasons I do not have um, I think it has a two position gas valve and the standard flash rider is the machined in version as with the Assault Rifle 90 uh, therefore leading me to think that they do not use it suppressed I've also never seen the Assault Rifle 07 suppressed in any media uh, that has been released um, it is worthwhile noticing that there is the, the short version of the SIG 553 is also in use it's actually called Assault Rifle 07K for Kurz um, you may notice that the word K is used across the German-speaking area in Europe for guns as with the MP5K, which is MP5 Kurz. Uh, so they do have the uh, Assault Rifle 07K. This is only used by the most elite units, which are, I think are not militia special forces as we do have. Uh, these are professional special forces. They are issued with the Assault Rifle 07K. This is just my assumption, actually. I mean, do not have any, this is just based on what our pictures I could observe. Um, I think they are issued the 07K and 
what that changes. It's actually the same configuration up to the barrel. It's uh, it's a normal SIG 553 short barrel, but funnily enough, it doesn't have the um, any BNT or machined in muzzle device. It has a surefire three prong uh, flash hider, and it's used with uh, SOCOM suppressor in FD. This is what my personal uh, interpretation based on the picture that I could see released from the Department of Defense. Um, if you buy this gun new, you can also observe in the owner's manual they do have um, it's it's an overall assault rifle 07 manual for the normal version and for the K version, and also like for the civilian version, also for the military version, it's all in one for probably to save money. And you can actually uh, see the specifics of the STG 07 or assault rifle 07K um, with the surefire um, flash hider and so on and so forth. So there is some truth to that um, with regard to the configuration. Uh, again, the people who use it, it's obviously not written in the manual, but I assume it's the professional special forces that we do have in the military. Um, what does this gun bring to the table? Well, as you can already tell from the magazine, it brings 50% more firepower because with the normal magazine that you're issued, you only have 20 rounds. So 30 rounds, a lot more fun, I guess. Um, it brings capability, essentially. Um, it overcomes the gap that you had with the assault rifle 90 uh, that was just meant to shot precision rounds at, I don't know, 100, 200 meters. I don't think it was really made for urban combat. This gun brings the capability to the table uh, in the configuration um, as it was adopted. Why? Well, essentially, you do have your fucking endpoint, um, which in 2018 is not too bad. Actually, it was, it was adopted in 07, so 10 years ago. Good that they finally jumped on the train of endpoints. Um, I do think that knowing how to use your iron sight is key, but honestly, it's just a force multiplier. Uh, like having an endpoint is a force multiplier. I don't think that you're a worse shooter if you use an endpoint. Uh, <laughs> compared to someone who uses iron sights all the time, especially at a bit of a night time or dusk in the morning. Um, for distances, you do have the magnifier, so you do not lose, even though you have a shorter barrel, and some people might tell you that you're actually you know, losing out on the ballistics and whatever, gives a fuck when you have something that allows you to just um, focus on your enemy faster um, and drop more shots. Uh, I mean, with the Assault Rifle 90, until you lined up all of your iron sights, I think with this gun, even if it's your configuration, you could just put more fire down range and be more effective overall, so definitely, uh, definitely brings time advantage and more modularity, um, which in 2018 is not so bad. It has a collapsible buttstock, which is actually really... Um, really of high quality. Um, having the scar here at the back, I can tell you, the scar quality is like going to fucking the cheapest supermarket and buy the cheapest shit. This one is by far the most high quality um, retractable and folding buttstock that I've ever used. I had some concerns at the beginning, I thought it was a bit cheap ass. Uh, maybe it would be a little flimsy, but even in the most outright protruded position, it's definitely can hold um, the weight of the gun. So, good job um, on that one. Um, yeah, why did I get this gun? Well, essentially I noticed, and if you follow my video you know it too, I have a slight bias in my gun collection, in guns that are, um, well of course 5.56, but then 10, 9, 11 inch. Um, and what's the problem with that? Well, essentially not they all look cool, and I think that 10 inch configuration plus minus is the coolest uh, that you can get for any 5.56 guns. Um, some of the most iconic guns are 10 inch uh, for historical and whatnot reasons. So uh, I don't have any specific wish to deviate from that. I just think that this gun in general, though, brings some capability which I did not yet have. Um, you do have a 13 point something inch barrel, uh, which is similar or actually almost identical to the SIG 5.51. Um, so you keep the SIG platform, you have a longer barrel, but this gun is, I think, more well-balanced than the 5.51. Five, 
The 551 is probably a better gun. I used to own that one, I sold it. The 551 has a gas block at the forefront uh, of the barrel, of the muzzle. And it has more dwell time, it probably runs cleaner and also for like has less stress on the moving parts um, because the gas can burn for more time as opposed to the 553 but the 553 since uh, you're only able to attach stuff onto up to a certain point I think oh, is overall a more well-balanced gun um, and I can confirm that because I've shot the 551 extensively I've shot this one not so extensively but the feeling is, is definitely there so uh, 13 point something inch more well-balanced capability to shoot and reach out a bit longer distances without uh, needing too much time to just uh, acquire and identify the target. Um, I think my experience at longer range with the short barrel 5.53 is not that exceptional with the Alcan, which is a really quality, high quality optics. I was able to get okay groups with standard ammo, like American Eagle and stuff. Um, I'm not too sure if I fucked up the, the whole rifling thing because these guns come with the Swiss rifling and with just the global rifling. Um, the prior 553 that I owned was the Canadian export model, so I'm sure it had the global rifling uh, and hence I don't think the average accuracy that I got at 300 meters was due to the wrong rifling. Nevertheless, um, what do you want to do when you have a 8 point something inch barrel and there's only so much you can get at 300 meters as opposed to 14 inch, 20 inch. It is, I guess, it's just fucking science, so there's no way challenging this. With 13 inch barrel or 14 almost, um, I think you're gonna get maybe a bit more accuracy at this distance uh, and faster accuracy with this, um, which is something I did not have on my 553 short barrel. So within the broader setup of my collection, um, I now have something which is has the capability of being magnified um, as opposed to hollow sights and endpoints or iron sights that I have on the other guns. So you bring that magnification effect to the table, um, you bring a bit of a longer barrel, um, and this is the gun that you can probably uh, pick up and know that you can hit 200, 300 meters with, um, with security, okay, with, uh, with confidence. Whereas some of the other guns that I own, um, I don't know, the market teams and stuff, they are good, 100 meters, no problem, 200, 300, they, it's, it's a bit stretched, especially with no magnified optics, with such a small barrel. Uh, whereas with this one, I like the fact that I can stretch it out a little bit longer, if needed to be. If not, I just take the fucking magnifier off, and it's good to go also for CQB. It's not too bad. With the, the stock folded, um, it's more handy, okay? You can turn around angles and do some manipulations a bit in a more convenient fashion as opposed to the normal Astro Rifle 90. I have not shot this gun too much um, yet, not because I didn't want to, I just didn't have time, um, but it's definitely on the agenda that I take this gun to the range a bit more often um, and also more compared to the other guns that I used to bring, like the Mark 18s. Um, what else can I say? Um, overall I think it's a pretty neat gun. Um, the build quality is exceptional, as usual with Swiss Arms. There's some people who are ranting that since Swiss Arms uh, became the new SIG, the barrels are not the same, the distance is not the same, that is not the same. I don't know based on what grounds uh, these claims are made, because honestly, as a fucking civilian that shoots every now and then, I don't see any difference. Uh, the build quality is, as with the army gun, is okay. I mean, it's exceptional, flawless. Um, the guns change a little bit over time. Um, the 5.53s, the former 5.53 that I used to own, had the Picatinny section here at 12 o'clock, uh, machined in the middle. So the horizontal profile of the protrusion of the Picatinny rail were discontinued in the middle. It was machined off. So it seems, I don't know why they did it, maybe to cut weight. I have no idea. The same holds for the quad rail. The new quad rails do not have the the machined in uh, middle section of the rails. So I don't know if that adds more precision. Uh, one funny thing is that I mentioned also in the RV that I had to take down, unfortunately. I was told that when I bought this gun that there is a segment, that, a little link piece that you can buy to link the upper 12 o'clock rail with the uh, quad rail at the front. 
for the purpose of avoiding any wobble. When you have the laser side mounted on, that can probably be a concern as it's it's not loose, but it, it doesn't rattle, but it just moves millimetrically. Um, and I was told that with the little linking piece, which is supposed to be cheap and just can be mounted on here in the middle, uh, you just fix it and it doesn't move at all. Why would you want to do that? Um, well, probably if you want to hit shit at night, okay. Um, for purpose of cleaning the gun and everything, honestly, I would not mount it. It's probably easier to take it apart. Uh, with that, without the little piece. Although I have not seen the little piece, so I cannot tell you. Um, it's probably more of an issue if you really need to hit at 100 meters at night, uh, which is not my concern since at night I drink beer or I sleep or both. Um, yeah, um, looking forward to bring this gun to the range a little bit more often. Um, looking forward to go to the range at all more often, um, which is not easy, um, as you may or may not know. Um, yeah, how this gun, uh, how does this compare to other uh, late guns that I purchased, such as the HK MR223, the new version? Um, well, it's as usual with SIG, there's more weight overall, and especially at the front. Um, it's also the same with HK, it's not the same with uh, your uh, DI SBRs, but um, I'm willing to do the trade off, okay? Um, I'm willing to go into the trade-off because I know what it brings to the table. It's not just random added weight, um, as with HK. Well, fucking HK will just bring a lot of added weight at the front because their barrels are so massive. Um, I don't think there's any added value to that. You don't want to have this problem here. There's a bit of added weight, but just by virtue of the fact of how the gun works. So the trade-off is more fun like a different kind of functionality um, for more weight. So fuck this, okay? Uh, I'm down to that. Whereas with HK, there's no excuse. It's just cheap ass manufacturing that they are not willing to trim down their barrels. Sorry, HK. Um, other than that, um, do I plan to modify the gun further? Actually, not. I think I like this in this configuration. It looks cool. If you Google some pictures of new assault rifle 90, you will notice that the one difference beyond the fact that this one is only fucking semi-auto is the fact that the army guns have guns, have mags, which do not have any notches on the side, so you cannot um, couple them together, jungle style. Um, it's a bit of a controversy on these fucking jungle style mags. Some of the most proficient military users tend to agree that it's not an asset having the notches. Uh, it brings, I don't know, you couple mags together and then you lose rounds while you're running and doing shit. It's more different to do transitions or to change mags. Fair enough, I get it. Um, for me, honestly, I think it's cool to be able to, you know, put mags together. Uh, at least for the first contact, um, you may want to have maybe two mags coupled together. So you bring, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 rounds um, or 60 even. It depends if you have 20 rounders or 30 rounders. You bring more ammo to the table uh, for the first contact and you can transition faster so if you need to sprint out from cover fast um, it's just a lightning quick mag change I don't understand how this can be a liability of course then if you're talking stuffed mags into your pouches of um, whatever vest you're carrying then I could understand like a hybrid model where maybe just two mags are coupled together for the first contact and then the rest is um, just normal mags without the notches makes transitions easier uh, taking out mags and manipulating stuff but um, I still think there is some use in this uh, little notches to put mags together um, and yeah so stay tuned I hope to do some footage at the gun range soon uh, it's not easy some gun ranges do not like it uh, when you take footage on the range so, and most of the times I forget to bring the camera but eventually it will come, and I hope to be able to report how the accuracy is at uh, longer distances. Uh, when I go to a range, it actually allows you to shoot beyond 30 meters. Um, there is one which is about one hour drive, so I need to plan it carefully with some of my mates. I go there and shoot the gun, and then I'll be able to report how it does. Um, for anything else, it's 2019. I hope you had a nice time. Uh, lots of drinks, lots of food. 
it's time to go back to work, make some money, and buy more guns. Thanks for watching.